Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a cloud solution architect focused on management technologies. Today's discussion is another installment in our focus on Azure Arc, specifically for servers, and today specifically for change tracking and inventory. As we start the session, I always want to give the backdrop of what Azure Arc really is. Right? It sounds like something that is is kind of uh, I don't know, unique, you know, maybe maybe something other than what it is. Maybe that's just my perception. Don't know. Certainly, I've done a session already in this series that talks about specifically what Azure Arc is, but a, a thumbnail of it, right? So all of the different capabilities that we've talked about, we'll talk about in the Azure Arc series. So uh, last one I recorded was uh, Insights and uh, another one was Windows Admin Center, and another one was Update Management, right? All of those capabilities are not Azure Arc, right? All of those capabilities are native Azure control capabilities that you have freely available uh, uh, or that you have, uh, have use of, if you will, for uh, virtual machine workloads that are running in Azure. But many of these tools are very compelling in having the ability to extend these tools and manage servers no matter where they are in non-Azure locations. So AWS, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, Bob's Cloud, on-prem VMs, on-prem servers, whatever. It's a compelling thing. Azure Arc is effectively that connectivity or piece that allows you to extend the native Azure monitoring or whatever capabilities to non-Azure environments. And that's certainly true for change tracking and inventory. So with that, with that brief background, let's get into change tracking and inventory. So same agenda as we'll always uh, generally have. What is this thing, change tracking and inventory? Why do we care about it? What are the requirements? How does it work? Let's actually configure it and watch what it looks like uh, in my lab. Okay, so what is this thing called change tracking and inventory? Well, again, this, this is a native Azure capability that you can extend to your non-Azure environment with Azure Arc. So the assumption as we're approaching change tracking and inventory is that your servers have already been onboarded to Azure Arc. And so there's a discussion that I have a previous recording that I did on how to do that really easy, right? Once you do that, you can enable change tracking and inventory. And change tracking and inventory, not to be silly, it tracks changes. That's exactly what it does, right? It helps you look at a server today and then look at it over time and see what kind of changes have happened to it in really a, a few areas. So in the files, uh, uh, in the, the registry, in uh, software, right? Services or daemons in the, the case of Linux, right? And that's another thing to say is change tracking and inventory fully fully supported on Windows, fully supported on Linux as well, right? Uh, in terms of what it is, right, it is a, a piece that makes use of Microsoft Defender for Cloud File Integrity Monitoring. That's, you know, FIM is what, it's a lot easier to say FIM than, than that uh, big word salad ahead. But it, it makes use of FIM. It, it not entirely. FIM is focused on a certain number of things. For example, uh, if we want to examine the operating system and application files, that will be FIM. If we want to examine uh, the Windows registry, that's going to be FIM. So FIM works alongside with native change tracking and inventory to uh, give you the whole picture. So with native change tracking and inventory, that's going to be software changes. That's going to be uh, maybe some Linux daemons. That will also be some Windows services, you know, type thing, right? And And knowing that, is just knowledge, right? You don't have to really probably pay attention to it. It just happens behind the scenes and you'll get the result. But that, that's what this is. So why do we care about change tracking and inventory? Well, again, not to be silly, but it's Azure Arc. This allows you to take all of the servers that you need to manage and manage them in one consistent place, whether they're Azure, non-Azure, it does not matter. So what you're going to see whenever I show you change tracking and inventory applies wherever you need it, wherever you want it, and there's some real compelling reasons for having change tracking and inventory that I can think of. I mean, you can fill in the blank as far as the 
scenarios. But imagine that you have something happen to a certain grouping of servers and you do have change tracking and inventory enabled. It's a really easy way to go in and find out, hey, what changed, right? What changed on this um, on this system, right? And uh, and maybe do it that way. If there's some really critical, you know, file or registry key or something that you want to make sure is not being altered, then you can do that too, right? So it's really it's really up to you uh, in your scenarios how you would use it, but it's a it's a very compelling. Uh, capability, right? Okay. Now, what are the requirements for using change tracking and inventory? So, in order to use change tracking and inventory, you do need to have a supporting oper supported operating system. Good news is, on the Windows side, that's pretty much any that is any operating system that is currently in support. Uh, you'll find supported configurations from Windows Server 2008 SP2 Plus. Now, one thing about that for all of the modern OSs. Yeah, I don't remember, but I'm thinking 2012 forward, if I remember the chart correctly. You're going to find they're going to be very fully supported, right? There are going to be some differences depending on the OS, right, uh, of Windows, what you're going to have supported. There's also uh, implied, I should, I should say this here, to enable change tracking inventory, you're either going to have to install the log analytics agent and the things that go along with that, which you will see, or the Azure monitoring agent. So. Uh, your choice, really, Azure Monitoring Agent is recommended. There will be some differences in what's supported depending on which agent you have. Uh, and I'm using Log Analytics just because it's easier for my demo and, and whatever. But the recommendation going forward is to use the Azure Monitoring Agent. And the good news, you're not going to see great differences uh, in data between the two, right? Uh, on Linux side, then... Uh, same things about Log Analytics Azure Monitoring Agent, and these are the supported distributions of Linux. So we have a good wide uh, list of supported systems. For Linux, we would need Python 2 or 3. There are certain networking requirements that are documented, so I'm not going to go uh, into them. And then once all of this is ready, then we need to enable change tracking and inventory, which is a great segue coming up to actually showing how to do that. Before we get there, how does this all work? So this is Steve's attempt to kind of map this out. And it wouldn't, this is with the uh, log analytics agent. It wouldn't look terribly uh, different probably if you had uh, the Azure monitoring agent. Here, I have a Linux server and a Windows server. Uh, here, I, on both, I have the log analytics agent installed. That's going to, so, so these servers are communicating with Azure Arc just because they've been onboarded. To Azure Arc. The log analytics agent is going to allow certain data to be collected and sent forward uh, to the log analytics workspace and so on, right? So change tracking and inventory will come in and work through Azure Arc to uh, grab on to the data that these agents are going to submit, submit that over to Azure monitor logs down to log analytics workspace, right? For the native change tracking and inventory. There are certain components, certain things that are done with FIP as we talked about. So that's going to work through Azure Arc as well to these servers and then store its data in the same log analytics workspace, right? So again, uh, this is for log analytics that I'm showing you this. It's not for Azure monitoring agent. So uh, if you are going to use a, a new deployment, it's recommended to use Azure monitoring agent. And uh, just so you know, FIM which is going to feed some of the data is only available when Microsoft Defender for Servers is enabled, right? So that's a, a requirement as well, right? So this is, this is it. So how do we actually configure this thing and get it set up, right? So let me pull in the Azure portal for just a moment. Well, we'll spend a lot of time over here, right? So, <laughs> pardon me, let me... Before I go to the Log Analytics workspace, let me go to uh, servers in Azure, right? So with Azure Arc is, again, that connective tissue that allows you to work with certain features on non-Azure enabled servers, right? So if I were to go to updates, I could use this Azure Arc portal and connection to enable updates. I've done that in previous sessions. Monitoring insights, I've done that too, right? Uh, policies, which we haven't talked about yet, but will, I could do that as well. Change tracking and inventory 
is not that's not true about that. In fact, let me just use another server because I do have change tracking inventory enabled here. Let me choose this one, right? If I go down and click on change tracking and inventory, and if change tracking and inventory is not enabled, based on previous experience, I would expect to see a configuration option to enable this. And you see the enable button, and I'll look at the options, and I keep waiting, and I see loading, and I'm like, well, what exactly do I do here, right? Do I wait forever? Is there a problem here that I need to deal with? And the answer is no, there's not a problem, right? And I've given feedback to, and others have too, to the product, to the product team uh, about this. But this is the only feature uh, that I have in um, in Azure Arc that I cannot actually enable through the Azure Arc portal, right? Um, all the other ones I can't. It doesn't mean that I can't use it with Azure Arc. What it means is I have to go natively to that feature in Azure and, and bring the Azure Arc servers into the fold through those native configurations. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now, right? Uh, okay, so to do that, so I've mentioned a couple of pieces. I've mentioned Log Analytics Workspace. We're, we're gonna set that up because I'm using Log Analytics Agent. I've also mentioned, I, I don't think I have, but there's another tie-in called uh, automation account that I've got to have. So we'll, we'll show you how all of these kind of fit together. So let me go into the Log Analytics Workspace. So with the Log Analytics Workspace, I've created one specifically for my demo. It's up to you if you have existing Log Analytics Workspaces as to whether you create your own or not. Uh, this one I created unique to uh, change tracking and inventory. It's located in the central US, so keep in mind that you'll see this location pop up in a few places. Now, what I've what I've kind of come to believe as testing this is if you have devices in central and then you also have devices in east or in other regions, right? You do need a log analytics workspace and an automation account unique to those regions. Right? Um, so again, I've got mine all set up. It's pretty easy in the lab, but but you do need you do need, it seems, to have uh, those set up uniquely per region. It doesn't look like, uh, unless I'm missing something, it might be, but you can easily cross connect uh, between the two. Um, so uh, anyway, so I've got my log analytics workspace created. Very easy to create one. All you do is click create and then fill out the details uh, for resource group name, region, whatever. I'm not gonna create a new one because I've got one. So now that I have this workspace created, what I need to do is configure the servers to send their data to my log analytics workspace. So the way I do that, I'm going to on, effectively onboard my Windows and Linux servers into the log analytics workspace. So I'm going to click on Windows and Linux management. And here you see that I have two Windows computers connected. And on the Linux side, I have one Linux computer connected. The way that I connect them is I will go down and download the agent. Now the download will be Windows specific or Linux specific, and there will be a different pathway you'll take to install. The good news is, especially for a Linux, uh, lack of knowledge Linux person like me, is that we do provide really, really good detail in the documentation about how to install uh, the Linux agent for me. I just uh, took WinSCP, connected it to my Linux distribution, copied the files over there, and then went onto the Linux terminal and just ran the commands. It was pretty easy, right? So I can download the agent. I've already done that, right? Other key things that are important are the workspace ID and the primary key. Now, these are things that you would want to keep private and secure, right? In my lab, this is my lab, so I don't really care. But if it's production, I would definitely want to keep these private and secure. So let me pull in... Uh, one of my Windows servers for a moment. Sorry, let me go grab, uh, where'd it go? Let me go grab this one and start it up. This is one that I have not onboarded yet. Uh, I've copied things to it, but I haven't onboarded it yet. To it, It's onboarded to Azure Arc. It is not onboarded to uh, uh, the Log Analytics workspace. Okay, so I do have the tools here 
This basically is just me having some shortcut information so that I can put it into the tool when I'm ready. Copy that. And launch MMA Center. So this is what would be downloaded for a Windows system. I'm going to click Next, click I Agree, click Next. I'm going to connect this to Log Analytics. And then I'm going to put in the Workspace ID. I'm also going to go to the end and grab this. Copy that and paste it here. And so on. Choose whichever tenant is appropriate. So uh, GovCloud, uh, Commercial Cloud, whatever. Mine's all in commercial. And I'm going to click Next and let it go forward and finish the install. Right, And that's it. Right Now, how you do this, I'm doing it manually. You can certainly do this at scale uh, through you know, a bunch of different processes, perhaps. Uh, Config Manager, you know, uh, PowerShell, you know, whatever. Desire, whatever, you know, lots of choices. So this is onboarded, or it's onboarding. This will take a little bit to show up. But this is my Log Analytics workspace. And you can tell it's through the Log Analytics agent, no Azure Monitor agent so far, right? So I've got my Log Analytics workspace set up. Good. So the systems are onboarded in the case of these two uh, in one Linux server, and the fourth one is onboarding now, right? Now, the next thing I need is I need to move over to my, uh, and by the way, the process for Linux, again, is very, very similar uh, in fact, let me just show you this real quick because it's, it's good to see, right? We will show you that you can download, ah, sorry. We will show you the uh, log analytics process for onboarding. We'll give you the workspace ID primary key. But if you look at this, especially for a Linux uh, not so proficient guy like myself, having this command, that I can run through terminal is, uh, or through bash on the Linux server is awesome. And what you'll see is you can just copy and paste it. And it already has the workspace ID and it has the primary key already on the command line. So it makes it really, really, really easy, right? So you, yeah, you can go through, you can download, you can you know, generate this at, uh, you, can, you can deploy this at scale however you want to, or you can just run this command on servers as well, whichever you choose, right? I did the wget because it's just so much easier, uh, to me anyway. All right, so now the next thing I have to do, log analytics agent is gonna do the churning and collect on the system, whatever. What I also need to do though, is I need to uh, create an automation account. So here's my automation account. It is also in central US, so same region. And so this account is going to be used to actually do uh, some work you know, on the server, right? I think of it as a service account, right? Now, I can go into the automation account and there's a bunch of things I can do. I can go look at my log analytics workspace uh, down here if I want to, you know, and, and one of the cool things about it, now, one of the cool things about it is, yeah, we will put change tracking and inventory data in the log analytics workspace, absolutely. But, but that's not the only thing that might be in the log analytics workspace. That's what I'm saying. You can decide maybe you want to combine and have multiple uh, input sources into your log analytics workspace. That's fine. Or maybe you uh, you want to do it uniquely for change tracking, inventory, whichever, right? But whatever data is actually in the log analytics workspace, you can use uh, Custo queries and actually query that data out, you know, and so forth, right? So just FYI. Uh, now, under the automation account, what I need to do is enable change tracking and inventory on my devices, right? I cannot do it through the Azure Arc portal, so I have to come over here. This is the native change tracking feature that relies on the automation account. So if I go into change tracking, you're going to see that the few servers I already have are producing data, right? They're, they're here, right? And if I want to see documentation about how to add a non-Azure uh, machine, I can do that. This is our documentation for that. I've already got it done, so not a, a huge problem. But uh, now what I need to do is in order to onboard machines into change tracking and inventory, 
I'll go manage machines. Now I have a few options. Enable on all available machines, that's one option. Enable on all available and future, right? Maybe you've added some machines and you think they're going to get automatically loaded into your uh, change tracking and inventory. Well, they will if you've done this. They will not if you have not, right? And Or you can just enable on select machines, right? So I have this one. So this is the one that I just installed the log analytics agent. So I have to approve loading onto this device. So I will enable that. We're going to go out and uh, run a, a, a package. So I just updated log analytics to include change tracking and inventory. So at some point, we'll have uh, the, the system uh, being added into the mix. Right, uh, my other, my well, it's already starting to get at it. Right, uh, here's the arc th arc three that I I put on. So anyway, you you can tell, right? Uh, and then there's another page, and and so on. Right. So anyway, so we're starting to see, and and so here is my unified all up view. Right. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna focus in here. I'm gonna go back now to my servers. Uh, Azure Arc. And now that I've enabled Azure Arc on the server, I can, I'm going to go to this one because it's the one I've had in the longest. Uh, now that I've enabled, cha sorry, change tracking and inventory on the server, I can go focus on this particular server for change tracking and inventory. Now, again, let me call your attention to the name of this, change tracking and inventory. So when I put this on the box, if nothing changes, then we don't have anything to see, right? Now, some of the services here uh, have changed, and we can see what they are, and we can see the category and what's been modified. We can drill in and kind of see some some detail, right? And the services stopped and, you know, different things about it, and, and that might have been what happened. Or look at this one and see it was uh, 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 running before, and then it was stopped or whatever. So we can see the details of what's gone on with our services. So that's really, really cool. We can track events. I don't have any events that have happened uh, during the time window. I can also alter the time window if I want to, if I'm honing in on a problem, see things that happened in the last 30 minutes, hour, whatever. Right Now there's some other things. The reason I don't see files and so on probably in here is because I have not enabled that. So this is just all default. So here, we see the uh, the registry keys that are tracked for changes by default, right? Uh, and notice we see recursive true. So one thing you'll hear me talk about in a minute is that recursion on the registry just doesn't work right now. So that is a current limitation. Um, they are configured by default to recurse, but they won't actually do it. Um, but here, if you wanted to remove a registry key, you can. Right, you can delete it, no problem, if you don't like it there. If you want to add a registry key, you can do that too, uh, no problem. Uh, lo local machine, HK local machine registry keys. Windows files. So I don't have any Windows files configured, but I can. Right, Recursion absolutely works on Windows files, no problem. Linux files, uh, nothing uh, specific except in this path. So I've got this path configured. You can tell that the wildcard does work, right? Uh, so if you have just a single wildcard at the end of a path, it'll work for Windows, for Linux, fine, no problem. Uh, if you want to, so notice I can add here, and for both Windows and Linux, I can choose to recurse, I can choose to upload if I want to, you know, whatever the case may be. So if I choose to upload a file that's changed, then I can put it to a storage account and link to the storage account and be able to view what's going on uh, with the file contents that have changed. Here's my Windows services. I'm scanning every 30 minutes. I can change this. Watch how fast this happens, right? There, I just changed it, and now I'm going to change it back, right? Okay. So pretty easy concept to understand. But then, and so again, for my one server, I can see all the, the different things uh, that have changed in terms of services uh, during the time window I've specified. So a really easy interface. But imagine the power of being able to just go look at a server that might be having some oddity and find out what, what changes happen. You know, what's going on? And, and be able to configure 
things the way that you want to. You can also look uh, at activity logs. I'm not connected to anything, but you can tie that in if you want to. All right. All right. So let's um, let's go back and see if we go natively to our automation account. Uh, do we have anything yet for our? Actually, I saw we did. Right. I showed you a second ago. It was very very quick to actually get in some detail for my freshly onboarded server to uh, change tracking and inventory. Here it is, uh, arc three, and then there's arc one and uh, <clears throat> so on. All right. Um, okay. Now, all right, good enough. Let's see what's over here on the ellipsis. Uh, okay. So yeah, good. And tie into log analytics here and, and so on, right? So pretty easy, easy interface to understand, right? So we've done configuring, I've shown it to you in action. Now starting to wrap up. Now, there are some ways to troubleshoot things. If you're struggling, like for example, you would, when you install the Log Analytics agent, you should, would expect it to connect to the Log Analytics workspace. Maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe you're having a hard time, it didn't get any problems installing, but it's just not showing up in the Log Analytics workspace. So we do have some troubleshooting tools. Let me just open up PowerShell, PowerShell directly. And the same, by the way, exists for Linux. What I'm going to show you here, the same tool exists for Linux. Let me go back. There. There. So the monitoring agent, that is your log analytics agent. Then I can go to the agent, and then I can do a dir. You can see all the stuff there. These are, uh, come on. Oh, that works in command prompt driver, but you can see all the you know folders that are up here and so on, right up here, no problem. And so if we navigate into the troubleshooting folder, oh, sorry. and do a directory, you're going to see this get agent info. And we can just run it. And it's going to present you a screen. I can tell it to run, and I can get logs if I want to. I can diagnose. I'm not going to let it run uh, because we don't really need to. But it'll just run through and tell you what's going on. Again, same thing on a, uh, on a Linux server, uh, just a little bit different way to get there. But again, the documentation is excellent for how to uh, how to get there on a Linux server, right? Okay. Now, other things in terms of tips and tricks, right? That we can uh, we can walk through here. So, there are certain things to be aware of uh, for for log analytics or for change tracking and inventory. I talked about the difference between Azure monitoring tool and the log analytics tool, and there are some differences. We do recommend for new deployments use the Azure monitoring agent. There are some benefits, uh, such as compatibility with the new unified monitoring agent and some tracking tools and multi-homing experience, rules management, blah, blah, blah. There's some additional security enhancements, scale enhancements, uh, rule management, and so on, right? So it's a good thing to use the Azure monitoring uh, agent. There are some limitations with um, uh, uh, change tracking and inventory right now. I won't belabor the point because we do document these. But, you know, recursion, I mentioned for the registry, Windows registry keys, there is a limitation. It's not, other things will recurse just fine. So, you know, file system directories. Talked about the use of wildcards, so you can absolutely use wildcards, uh, no problem. Uh, you, We cannot do change tracking and management on network file systems uh, right now. You can choose whatever installation method you want to use for this, right? Uh, log analytics agent and change track, whatever, right? You can, there, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Right now on Windows, we're not collecting .exe files. So that's, I kind of view that as a positive thing, but you know, whatever. Uh, we do have a maximum file size column uh, that's currently not used. Uh, in future implementations, it may be. File changes, we'll track them, but they have to be file size limits of 5 meg or less. And then for the file size itself, the file size appears 
So if the file size appears to be greater than 1.25 megabytes, then file content uh, checksum is incorrect in there, right? So be aware, we'll still work with it, but we'll report the file content checksum incorrectly. There's some file collection details. Uh, if you try to collect more than 2,500 files in 30 minutes, yeah, it's not going to work, right? Or the performance will be degraded. So be aware, that's a lot of files to collect in 30 minutes. Uh, change records, if your cha uh, network traffic is high, change records can take up to six hours to show up. So be aware of that. And then finally, uh, configurations. And so if modifying a configuration while a machine is shut down, it's going to take until the machines turn back on to post that configuration report to become active. Uh, no way around that. Yeah, machine has to be on to be managed. Uh, hotfix. So collecting hotfix updates on Windows Server 2016 Core R3 machines is, is a challenge at the moment. And then Linux daemons. Right? So Linux daemons might show a change state even though no change has occurred. Um, it, it's because of the way FV, uh, SVC run levels data works in the Azure Monitor configuration change table. You know, so whatever. Uh, other limits, just limits. Oops, I went forward, didn't mean to. Uh, other limits, just to be aware of. So in terms of files, uh, 500 is the limit. File tracking in both Windows and Linux uses MD5 hashes of the files. And then the hashes are used to detect if changes have been made since the last uh, inventory. You can also view content, too, as I showed you, uh, for the files. File size, uh, 5 meg. Right, registry, 250 entries uh, that you can have. Windows software, 250, and that does not include software updates. For Linux packages, 1,250. Uh, daemons, 250, right, uh, is the limit. And then basically the collection frequency, we will talk about all of the different areas of how we collect and what. Or, or the frequency at which we collect. We do document that, so take a look if that's of interest uh, to you, and so on. And so that's a, a really quick view into change tracking and inventory. It's a really, really interesting to me feature to have enabled across all of the servers that you manage in your environment, whether they're Azure servers or non-Azure servers, Linux or Windows, it doesn't matter. So take a look for sure, and uh, we'll do another session coming up uh, on uh, Azure Arc. So stay tuned for that and we will see you next time.